here's how we're going to start the new season of Film Projects Fortnite. Was that, that was that was the was season that? passing you by? Because <laughs> it's so quick this year. <laughs> Um, no, that was something you could describe as moving very fast, Richard. Uh, and mm. that is, of course, the, the Doppler effect. <laughs> yeah. 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 That is, of course, welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. It's been a long time to the new uh, invented, new, new and improved <laughs> version of film franchise Fortnite on the Cold Pop podcast. For those of you that have been paying attention to our uh, off season, um, we are doing something a little bit new this year to accommodate yeah. for, for the, your, your two boys uh, growing up and having responsibilities mm. now. Um, is we are doing something we're calling Two Film, Two Franchise. So for all of 2024, um, we will be... Mm. Well, it's Two Film, Two Franchise, Four Tonight's. Two... Yes! <laughs> you need to put a zero on there somewhere. But yeah, yeah. yeah. It, we'll it, figure it out. We'll figure, we'll it, figure out. it out. <laughs> <laughs> zero means nothing, so you can just put zero anywhere. Yeah, and yeah. It still works. Um, yeah. So this year we're exclusively covering um two film franchises, a film and its sequel, and we toiled over which we should start with, Richard. Um, and despite uh, evidence we put out to the contrary, uh, we are not doing Blade Runner. We are not doing. Um, Tron. What was the other one? Tron. We are not we are doing fact... miscongeniality. No, we aren't, and we're not doing Street Kings either. <laughs> this is a reference. You. So you and I, we we're doing Speed and Speed Two. But before we get speed into to Cruise <laughs> Control, AJ. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Richard. I'm AJ. That's Richard. Um, we've been doing this for most of our adult lives. Wow, <laughs> speaking yeah. of speaking of speed. <laughs> boy mm. of the ages the boy, boy of the years stacking up mm. aren't they boy yeah, are we are. getting old um but we we uh, often do a thing for you guys the fans where we try to like tease or insert red herrings of mm. what the opening franchise of the year will be and this may be our most subtle and under under recognized one mm. yet uh which is we thought it would be funny to if Richard logged miscongeniality on Letterboxd and it would show up in our Discord. Um, and I thought, what if I log a Keanu Reeves duology? So it's laying the foundations for people to be like, Sandra Bullock and Miss Congeniality, and then of course the only duology that we could find <laughs> that we haven't covered that star Keanu Reeves uh is Street Kings, a movie I'd never heard of. He's, and he's not in the second one. Yeah, but that, like that, that's fine. Mm. I'm I'm at peace with that. <laughs> um, but we we both logged these and no one made a peep. So I do think that someone right now, they you did and I, say that it was noticed that yes, I logged no Congeniality. One, no one noticed I logged Street Kings. So I'm going to log Street Kings two now, Richard. And I'm going to pod. log Miss Congeniality two. Street Kings two Motor City. I apologize. Yeah, thank you. Uh, but, Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna log Miss Congeniality to Armed and Fabulous. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully, maybe we can check in on the Discord toward the end of the episode and see if this has pushed the fake hint across, and maybe can people can work out its speed starring Sandra Bullock and Keanu Reeves in the first one. <laughs> maybe this this a set of clue, the set of very crystal clear clues we have set out, um, will make. Uh, things clear for people but maybe not mm. um but hey welcome back well let's get back into the fray richard where we're talking speed where and did speed i two. go wrong I lost a <laughs> yes yes <laughs> um yeah so one of the reasons we picked speed um is because uh it kind of feels like a throw... It's the same genre of of film as Lethal Weapon, I think, mm. which was our first ever film franchise, Fortnite's. And we wanted to... You know how, like, Fast and Furious, the new Fast and Furious movie, they said they're throwing it back to the what the first one was like. You know, they're going back to, the, to its roots. That's what we're doing by covering the film's speed. Mm. Um, 
Yeah, so and let's get into it. Speed two mm-hmm. cruise control. So and so and beg your pardon, speed two cruise control. <clears throat> so speed is, came out. The first film came out in 1994. Mm. Um, it stars, as we said, Keanu Reeves, Sandra Bullock. You've also got Dennis Hopper in there and Jeff Daniels. Um, it was directed by a man named jo- Jan de Bont. Now Jan de Bont is a is a the blues this was his, Jan de Bont. Ah, oh, it probably is. He, this was his directorial debut. He followed it up in '96 with Twister, which has, mm. of course, just had its um, long about overdue. to become a two film franchise. There you go. Maybe it can be the year of Jan de Bont. Maybe we can open and close two mm. film two franchise with Jan de Bont. Um, uh, duologies um so he also uh directed speed 2 cruise control in 97 which we'll get to um and the only other movie he did that is relevant to me is he directed tomb raider uh the cradle of life the second tomb raider movie <laughs> wow it's, um, um yes yeah, so interesting you didn't i mean the um relevant to the podcast he mm-hmm. shot lethal weapon 3 he was the cinematographer for it. That tracks, doesn't it? Mm. That's that's a um, that makes a lot of he sense. He also uh, shot Die Hard. Yes, and a lot of the production of Speed was basically curbed uh, so that it wasn't a uh, blatant Die Hard ripoff. Basically, <laughs> is from from what I understand from doing the research. Um, yeah. So, uh, what is Speed about, Richard? Uh, Speed is. What a classic premise for a film, right? Like, Mm -hmm. yeah. And so it's about a, you've got this LAPD bomb disposal officer, Jack Traven, played by Keanu Mm, Reeves. Yeah! (laughs) Traven! (laughs) And, um, yeah, anyway, there's a whole, there's a bit of setup, but the, the, thrust a bit of- <laughs> there's a bit of setup in this movie that before so i'd never seen it before mm. thought it was famously about one concept yeah it's yeah. actually just the second of three concepts <laughs> in this movie. but the the yeah the sort of driving force of the film uh no pun intended is that mm. there's a bomb on a bus and mm. if the speed of the bus drops below fi- 50 miles per hour or 80 kilometers mm-hmm. an hour for our uh, non-American it, listeners. Our our idiots out there. <laughs> <laughs> they the, bo- the the bomb will explode, killing everyone on the bus. People aren't allowed to get off the bus. They're not allowed to stop the bus for any reason, obviously. Um, and yeah, it's speeding around the city. Keanu Reeves gets wind of this and then has to like get on to the speeding bus and then figure out what they can do. Uh, the mm. ending is they they end up getting to a sit on a, a train an air, <laughs> yeah, they, they end up getting to an airport they drive around there for a bit and they outsmart the the terrorist by because he's got cameras in the bus and so they film a little bit of that and then play it on a loop while they get run off the bus yeah. and so he just thinks that oh they're just standing there and it's been used in a few things um both both speed movies have led to one each have led to a great an all-time great simpsons joke there's mm. i'll get the i'll look it up so i get the wording right i've got i've got it in front of me if you'd the, like me yeah, to read go it. For or it. do you do you want the dopamine rush of being able to read the simpsons joke no you can do it okay uh, i said it was in front of me and by that i meant i i read it on the wikipedia okay here it is under legacy mm. on the wikipedia page um yeah so in the springfield files the x files episode of the simpsons mm. um the film is cited by homer simpson as the inspiration for his idea to use old cctv footage to la- to allow him and his friends to go drinking uh, and he of course a, a really funny joke says he thinks the movie is called The Bus That Couldn't Slow Down. Hey, well, so which the, is, the whole joke is, I saw this in a movie about a bus that had to speed around the, the city, yeah, yeah. keeping its speed above, over 50, and if its speed dropped, the bus would explode. I think it was called The Bus That Couldn't Slow Down. And I, I love 
the laziness of this punchline. Like I like <laughs> that it's 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 a very uniquely Simpsons joke. One mm. of these ones, one of these jokes that feels like it doesn't, it's not timed. Like it doesn't, it hasn't aged. It doesn't feel like a a nineties joke. Or yeah, I wonder if that's a, it. if it's a Schwarzwelder joke. Maybe because he he's like famous for writing the jokes that are like. I, I just I can't believe this was never put into words until now. Yeah, like yeah, it feels yeah, like yeah. it exists outside of time. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was interesting though, Richard, because in the Spider-Man 2018 video game, uh, the Insomniac one, uh, okay. there's a similar joke. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's a similar joke uh, where there's a bomb inside a truck um, and, and Spider-Man, while talking, I guess, to you, to himself, as he mm. does when you're doing missions, um, similarly forgets the name of speed and su- suggests it's called fastness or super quick, uh, which <laughs> I think is like the definitive I can't remember the name of the movie speed joke was already written in The Simpsons. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is nowhere near as good. I feel like that... that um, you know, it's not worth putting in. Almost. Yeah, I, I wonder if that's a little bit like a um, ah, I've forgotten the like the Mister Ursatz. I think is the the mm-hmm. the trope name, uh, where mm-hmm. it's like in the Spider Man Insomniac universe, the movie is called Fastness, or like it's not mm-hmm. called Speed; it's called something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, maybe that's well, XP, <laughs> maybe that's XP, what I think is the the term i'm thinking of. right yeah. right there you go um so yeah uh speed one it's it's a fairly critically revered uh film yeah. it has 95 percent on ron tomato wow. so uh pretty good for this like a lot very of very good for this kind of movie yeah c- contemporaries for this kind of movies have uh you know they've stayed in pop culture and people love them but then you go and look at the ron tomato score and it's like oh people hated this yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you look at something like con air or or even the first top gun which mm. i feel like a, you know the first top action. gun is not very good <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Um, what? So had you seen Speed before and what did you think? Yeah, so my biggest exposure to Speed was that Simpsons joke and, <laughs> um, and another Simpsons joke, which we'll get to when we cover the sequel. But they... Oh. <laughs> but I... I fucking loved this film. I thought it was so really? good. Yeah, I, I thought it was so cool. Like, mm-hmm. the the action was just so well put together and i and i guess you know that's coming from a cinematographer's background for the, the, the director i'm not talking mm, mm. myself coming from a cinematographer's background <laughs> uh, but, but i do <laughs> broadly i come from what could be generously I, I described things for a couple of years <laughs> but the but yeah like just the way everything's put together i i like i found it exhilarating and Mm. It's so much fun. But then I, I, I read this quote um, because it was a long time before we decided who would be doing the research. So I was reading a little bit about the film. Yeah, yeah. Um, that it was essentially like the they had to like ask for more budget because the film ends. They get everyone off the bus. It's like, oh, okay, great. They've done it. And then, like you said, yeah, the, the last 20, 30, 20, 25 minutes of the film take place on a train. And that's very much the like, oh, we've dealt with the bomb now we have to take down the guy who you know built the bomb and it takes place on a train and it said like they had to like yeah, source this extra money for that and but writing it or like at some point in production they said no one wants to just watch a bus movie for 90 minutes so they tacked on this 20 minutes at the end yeah. with the other thing and i was like no you have a perfect film which is 90 minutes. Like, this is a five-star 90-minute film with, like, a simple premise. It's, like, akin to something like Phone Booth, where it's, like, mm-hmm. you, you've got a, a great, simple premise. You're telling it in the amount of time it needs to be told. And then it's very much, like, this tacked-on thing. And it's funny you mentioned Top Gun, because I it actually one of the first things that reminded me of when I was watching it was Top Gun Maverick, how that has, like it reaches this very natural conclusion. They do the mission they need to. And then in Top Gun Maverick, it's like an extra 40 minutes of um, Maverick and Miles Teller's character um, trying to to get out. But like in Top Gun Maverick, it's like, it's so fucking good that it's like, yes, I want more of this action. Whereas in, in Speed, I was like, oh, like the movie ended perfectly. Like just wrap it up in a certain way so that, you know, because they've got, um, they're contacting the LAPD the whole time. and he says like 
a, a, you know, they, they go and, and raid where they think the guy is, but it's the wrong place. It's like, just have it be the right place. Yeah, were you bummed that Jeff Daniels dies? Yeah, I was. I, I, well, I first of all, I was very surprised to see Jeff Daniels in the film. That's, <laughs> in the film, yeah. Well, well, one of those things that has just uh, evaded me uh, for <laughs> for my entire F- life. Funnily enough, as well, so he plays Keanu Reeves, uh, Jack Traven's partner. Yeah. They're, they're, they're cops, and um, in the so in the first third of the film, uh, well, not not literal third in terms of fractions, but the, but Act. if there's three set pieces in the film, and the middle one's the bus. The first one is the same terrorist trying to hold people in an elevator uh, ransom. And in order to um, not let the bad guy get away, Keanu Reeves shoots Jeff Daniels in the leg because mm. they have a conversation earlier about shoot the hostage if there's if you're ever in a situation like that. Mm. And, and Jeff Daniels is being held at gunpoint. Um, and so then he becomes like the man in the chair, basically, for the um, the bus stuff. It's um, like when you say the first third, it's like we're talking eight to ten minutes of the film. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and why well, actually it has a very long opening credit scene for a movie called speed you are sitting there watching a <laughs> camera move down an elevator shaft with the opening credits That's up right, here yeah, yeah. F- for quite a long time I, w- I would guess like two minutes yeah. is just slowly moving down an elevator shaft but anyway jeff daniels is sort of the man on the chair while keanu reeves is on the bus and they think they find out where howard Payne, dennis hopper's mm. character is and they go to it but it's a red herring and, and they explode and it is kind of this moment where like there was like, a bomb they don't just explode yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> they just explode um, <laughs> that, like like jeff daniels has this kind of like almost out of place brilliant piece of acting just before he dies where you see the look on his face he sees the bomb about mm. to explode and you just see this look of like ah oh, fuck like i failed. Uh, oh here we go it. again and it's and it kind of i don't know if i wanted that character to die i yeah. don't know how else to put it like it was just kind of like a ah oh, that's yeah. a like I thought he was going to get his redemption as well, you know? Like, mm. I thought he deserved it. I mean, it, it ups the stakes and everything, but it's also one of these things where, like, surely these, uh, Jack Traven would be distraught for mm. the rest of the movie, not not immediately after saving Sandra Bullock at the end. He's like, anyway, let's have sex. There's a yeah, weird sex joke at the we end. Should, the yeah, because th- they, they keep talking about how, like, oh, relationships based on extreme circumstances don't work out because... They're like mm. they're all flirtatious. Like, no, we're only if we're only together because of speed. Uh, and mm. then at the end, yeah, they they say that, and she's like, "Well, what if it's just based on sex?" And he's like, "Uh, oh, that could work." Is this at the end, or is this at the when they get off the bus that this happens? And then there's the no. This is uh, after the trains like crashed. Right. There and right. they're lying yep. on top of each other. That's when they say that. Yeah. Uh, they they they, uh, they and- have the exchange without the sex joke earlier on though. Interestingly enough, um, though, uh, uh, Jeff Daniels' character in this film is named Harry, uh, which is the name... Is he Harry? Yeah, he's yeah, Harry he's in Dumb and Dumber. Christmases, yeah. Could could we now construe, <laughs> Richard, mm. that the bomb did not kill him? It made him like, really stupid really and stupid, forget yeah. his surname, and he then went on to be in uh, his next film. Yeah, Dumb d- and yeah, Dumber. only a few months later. Yeah, <laughs> but the but it's like but then the uh, when Harry met Lloyd kind of disproves that theory, doesn't uh, it? Ah, of course. Yeah, when Har- the prequel, Dumb and Dumberer, when Harry <laughs> uh, disproves this fan theory. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this popular fan theory. Um. So, so... What, what, you, sorry, what did you think, think of the film? You haven't really seen I, I enjoyed it a lot. I think, like you, I am struck with this, like, the whole movie's not the bus kind of thing. <laughs> like, this, this cultural thing that you think you know even though you haven't seen it and then you watch and you're like no one talks about how the climax of speed doesn't take place on the bus yeah. Isn't that's strange i guess it still takes place on a speeding receptacle <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but but still and uh, you're you're right i'm 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 torn here because you have a single location movie in the bag here. You have a concept film. Mm. I think the, diff- the the reason that Top Gun Maverick works so 
so for those that haven't seen it or need a refresher the movie is building up to a mission they've got to do they do it it goes slightly wrong and the two characters who have been struggling to get along the whole movie are now trapped in enemy territory and have to use their wits to then get out so it's a um the plan it didn't go according to plan now there's a new mission right and i think that's good writing in speed it's like the the it's the bus movie and it ends on a train like it's Mm. it's 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 they they do save the day and then they willingly get back into trouble because they're idiots instead Mm. of what it is in top gun which is yes ending this Mm. is also you know um and uh what I thought was kind of stupid about the third act of the film is that they're like, all right, all we've got to do now is trap the guy. He's just got to come to this this specific dumpster and just trust that he doesn't yeah, know, right, yeah. <laughs> like that he's not suspecting we'll be there. And what I thought was the like logic leap that wouldn't happen in real life is civilian Sandra Bullock accompanies them yeah, yeah, yeah and she she's the reason it screws up because dennis hopper goes up to her dressed as a cop and is like oh no no they want you to move this way and ends up kidnapping her mm. and i was like why would she be there why yeah. she does she would not want to be there she just survived a terrorist attack she wants yeah, but to she does want to fuck keanu Reeves. yeah so it's worth mentioning just like um <laughs> so early on uh when jack gets on the bus uh, this guy who ha- clearly has a criminal past gets up and is like no i'm not letting you take me and mm. he's like dude it's fine i don't give whatever you did i don't give a shit there's a more pressing issue and he yeah. fires ends up the gun ends up getting fired and it, it hits the bus driver and then so sandra bullock who was just a commuter on this bus is mm. the driver of the bus for the majority of of the bus sequence which is yeah. most of the film yeah and I also, um, but also sorry, also re- the, 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 you're talking about the logical leap you mentioned there, but also so they they have this tracker that they're like because they're waiting for him to do like a pickup or a, the, mm. a drop or, or something, and they have this tracker and then they realize like, wait a minute, he's already got the quick turn the tracker on. It's, mm. Why wasn't it already on? <laughs> like, mm. like mm. why didn't they just have the tracker on already? They're, they're like, they yeah. showed up to this thing and they're like, oh, it's 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 at forty percent. Sorry, I forgot to charge it last night. Mm. Can we just turn it on when we need it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it's just these little things that like kind of weaken and maybe they're realistic like human error is such a mm. massive part of why things go wrong yeah we're living in the human era <laughs> aren't we <laughs> are we living in my own human era day to day um so so yeah the, uh, the initial script was a it's all on the bus like even the start was on the bus mm. and basically everyone who looked at all the studios were like this is just die hard on a bus you need to make it a little more Mm. less obvious that it's just (laughs) what if it's die hard on a bus and a train (laughs) yeah exactly um so a few other things were changed um including jack traven's character was kind of rewritten from a a quippy one-liner to sort of like a quite a sensible Mm. polite character um which i i like that change i don't know how i feel about the including other set pieces other than the bus Mm. um (laughs) i don't i don't like the idea of millhouse having (laughs) having two set pieces pieces in one film Yeah, yeah. So the draft was, the script was reconfigured with none other than the internet's uh, favourite mm. discarded celebrity, Joss Whedon, um, who is credited as uh, writing most of the dialogue. Mm. This was his. Well, he's un- uncredited with writing most of uncredited, the dialogue. Uncredited, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <he's> too- <laughs> yeah, credited in the, in like the literal sense, but not in the official uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. sense, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so so it it used to look a bit different, and I think some of the rewrites aided the film, and some of them uh, didn't really. Um, before Keanu Reeves was cast, I can give you a few other apparent uh, Jack. Traven I would offers. love some Jack Travens. So Jack Traven is very one... even treeborn, isn't it? Do you think it's there's a so this is butterfly effects mm. e- event reborn? Mm. Um, like I don't cleverest. think Jack 
I don't think like Jack Triven is like a, a term necessarily, but like oh my god, I've been Jack Jack Triven to the to the dogs to the edge. today. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just like Traven. Mm. Yeah, Treeborn. I mean, it's a yeah. it's an action movie protagonist today. Jack Treven. Jack Treven. Um, <laughs> the the big the the first choice was, and I don't think this person has ever been anyone's uh, first choice for anything. Uh, was Stephen Baldwin? I think again the wow. yeah, the only time I've ever read the sentence Stephen Baldwin, the first choice for the role. Um, but he was apparently um, what that was their first pick. Wow. Uh, and I guess he would have been early- cheap. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He read an early version of the script and said it was too much like Die Hard. <laughs> it was a, a common theme coming up here. Um, they also looked at Tom Cruise, uh, mm. which would have been, I could see that. Tom Hanks, which I don't think I could see, uh, mm. at least not to the kind of roles that he has become mm. known for. Um, Wesley Snipes and Woody Harrelson were also. Oh, yeah. In, it's in interesting because, like, somewhere. Stephen Baldwin is one. Like, I'm sure he'd. he'd I just take a quick look at his filmography and there's nothing like super obvious, but like, cause this is pre usual suspects, but mm. I can, I can, this could have been like a star making turn for him. He could have been the most famous Baldwin if he'd taken this role. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and I think this is, this is the, this is the movie that propelled Sandra Bullock into stardom mm. as well. Like this is her first big, and big and role. I guess and I think it saw made people see Keanu Reeves in a different light as well because he wouldn't have really done much like this. He did he done Point Break, which is relatively oh, yeah, similar to, to but e- but even Point Break is like a uh, very surfer dude sort of thing. He's still got the sure. long hair and he's sure. you know playing a, yeah, a yeah. extreme uh, athlete. Yeah, yeah, but um. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I I read as well that there was a big thing about Keanu Reeves' haircut in the film. Yeah, so he had to, he got a buzz cut, hmm. uh, and people were freaking out apparently. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, it was it was sort of like I think that was him trying to like differentiate him hmm. himself from his previous roles. Something he <laughs> stopped doing. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Um, like yeah, I mean, Keanu Reeves is such a fascinating figure because I feel like. You like his first big stuff was Bill and Ted, a role which he never, other than the the, the uh, face of the music. Mm. It's like there was a time in my life where my understanding of Keanu Reeves was he could just only play Neo from the Matrix and barely play him. Yeah. To be honest, it's like such a such a wooden performer. Not necessarily bad, but like. I wouldn't trust and trust him with anything more complicated. I mean, look at uh, the Dracula movie he was in. Yeah, it's yeah. a pretty, pretty strange thing. Um, and this is definitely in the. This is a proto Neo, I would mm. say, Jack Traven. Um, but I thought I thought uh, Sandra Bullock was great, and and I think she's the best character in the film. To be honest, I, th- I think it's yeah. such a perfect like civilian you know thrust into greatness kind of role i think just we'll get to this later despite the fact that um that that keanu reeves just didn't want to do speed 2 i'm i actually think it it is better that speed 2 follows annie and not Mm. jack i I think that's that's a better choice uh, yeah so i finished speed 2 cruise control mere minutes before we started recording this so Mm. I don't know that I could, because it's so fresh in my mind, I don't know how much mm. I can agree with you, like praising Sandra Bullock. Um, because, <laughs> boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, it wasn't always Sandra Bullock, though. In fact, uh, Stephen Baldwin was, a, was their first choice. <laughs> it's, I reckon that um, you, you thought Stephen Baldwin was out of left field. We've got some crazy. We've got well. We've got one in particular crazy, nearly cast actors for um for Annie in um in Speed. Uh, so initially, uh, Annie was supposed to be an African American paramedic, which would justify mm. how she would be able to handle driving the bus. <laughs> uh, and the role was offered to Halle Berry, who declined the part. That's not that shocking. I could see Halle Berry in the role. Mm. Um, and she w- she did later regret the decision. And no wonder. I think this would have... Mm. I think we might not know who Sandra Bullock is if Halle Berry took the role. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, she Yeah, so she... Re- re- um, 
uh, regretted the decision. Um, later, she the character was changed from a paramedic to a driver's education teacher, and the character in the actual film, as Sandra Bullock plays her, is a woman who can't get her driver's license, mm. which is like, yeah, of course that's better than making her competent at driving a bus, mm. obviously, right? Like, you make the character the worst person who could be driving a bus. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's great. That's awesome. Um, but the when it was changed to the driving education uh, teacher uh, Richard, I will give you three guesses as who um, who was in mind for the part of Alan DeGeneres. Sorry, fuck! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it was Alan. Who cares? It was Alan DeGeneres. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that a weird? <laughs> Do you want to do this again and you just pretend? Or no, no, that's, we that's perfect. That in? <laughs> well, it's, but isn't that amazing? Let's forget my foible. Isn't that amazing? Like, Alan DeGeneres nearly played this, this wow. role. Wow. And so, because this would have been during what? her TV show? I guess I say nearly. It says in mind for the parts. So, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, maybe it wasn't even offered to her, but um, yeah. What a weird <laughs> career, again, a career trajectory role, yeah. I think. Sandra Bullock maybe. could be hosting, uh, c- could have been <laughs> cancelled for host, uh, <laughs> on her show Sandra. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, yeah, so Sandra Bullock came in to read um, and she had good chemistry with Keanu Reeves um, and, yeah, they had to roll around on the floor, get get, you know, do a lot of physical endurance to see how it work um allegedly allegedly according to wikipedia uh, meryl streep and kim basinger were also oh, nice. uh, offered the role if it was um, Stephen baldwin and kim basinger could have married the wrong baldwin wow um and hesh also uh was given from the opportunity, who would later gus event from, from, psycho f- from uh dying in a car crash as well so yeah uh you know, we we the world is already full full of too much um, dark irony with Paul Walker dying mm. in a car accident from being in a car based franchise. Would it would the world have been able to handle Anne Hesh f- made famous for speed dying in a car? Wow, crash? yeah, yeah. It it boggles yeah. the mind. Yeah. It boggles the brain. Um, yeah. So that's um speed one. <laughs> Uh, do you have any more any more stray loose thoughts about the first film? Mm, no, no. Um, yeah, so uh, it won. It actually won Oscars. Yeah. It won two Academy Awards, um, best sound and best special effects nice. editing. So Before the Oscars went cool. woke, <laughs> and famously conservative film speed. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, yeah, a couple years later, we got uh, Speed 2, Cruise Control. Um, this came out, so in 1997, Jan de Bont returned, um, and so did Sandra Bullock as <laughs> Annie, who did this movie to secure funding for another movie, which we'll talk about. Editor Richard here in the edit booth. Uh, it didn't actually come back up in the record, but... Uh, the film she was securing money for was called Hope Floats, which came out in 1998. She was paid a reported 11 to $13 million to reprise her role as Annie in Speed 2 Cruise Control. Um, Keanu Reeves didn't like the script and rejected, uh, you know, d- declined the offer to return. And so he was, uh, the script was changed to feature a new male lead tr- played by Jason Patrick, who's career trajectory didn't really move past speed two cruise yeah. control um yeah, sadly, he's a real stephen baldwin yeah yeah this is a stephen baldwin equivalent I yeah, think, yeah jason patrick uh but it, the villain is played by willem dafoe who is probably more of a get than dennis hopper if we're talking about oh yeah totally who's it, who's more famous it's, it's end, funny but. that like you know speed two cruise control considered one of the worst films ever made one of the worst sequels ever made um that like you watch this movie and you're, and you're like, fuck, you know, this destroyed Jason Patrick's career before it could, it doesn't, it, Patrick doesn't have a K in it. So you and I will get mm. to this, I'm sure in a sec, but we, we've always pronounced it Patrick, but the, 
Yeah, and like Sandra Bullock, it's like, you know, the, the nominated for a Razzie, and it's like one of those like smears on her career. But I feel like Willem Dafoe gets off scot free in this film. Mm. That like an actor like, because not only is he the villain, he's chewing the scenery, but like an actor like Willem Dafoe can't be bogged down by that kind of rhetoric of like, oh, why would he do this film? You know, because mm. it's like, yeah, it's he's having fun in a crappy film. Good on him, you know? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, Speed 2 Cruise Control, a movie in which the only thing I knew about it mm. for a long time was what a fucking joke of a sequel. Like, uh. like the, the, the joke being, hey, what if instead of it was on a... a bus going too fast mm. what if it was on a cruise liner yeah. which is like it's like yeah that's really stupid yeah. like because and they which, don't go very fast yeah I which guess. leads me to the other simpsons joke which is you yeah. know one of the all-time greats is when i think it's in the treehouse of horror episode with the gremlin on the side of the bus and the bus mm. is speeding uh through the city and millhouse says this is just like speed two only on a bus instead of a boat <laughs> <laughs> is there not a family guy joke about speed two cruise control there's a well? family guy joke about speed three yes the idea is... of, of speed three which is a glacier and it's like if this uh, glacier moves uh less than one inch a year this whole place mm. is going to explode get out of the way and there's an inuit uh fishing there and he's like huh <laughs> Yep. So this movie, um, as I said, for a long time, all I knew is that it was like a ridiculous premise for a sequel. Maybe like, I'll even say like, if you like, the first one is a concept film, right? The concept mm. is it's what well, it should be. They're all it's all set on the bus. This is what if you change the central vehicle and it's you know the joke. The joke of the movie is they changed it to the most slow moving um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like vehicle you could for a film called speed um so for a long time that was all i knew about it but you and i have a little interesting connection to this film which is when we were living together in auckland when we were in our young uh early 20s the podcast had started though so this mm. is still in podcast era um we had like this idea that we would put movie posters up in our house but they would only be for bad movies yeah. um but good posters for bad movies was the idea and it started because we found a poster like in this vintage poster shop mm. for speed Two cruise control and i like them i think it's a fun poster it's a very i, I like the color palette of it yeah. i like the what we did that I like that the lack of a really k cool. on his <laughs> on Jason Pat Patrick Patrick's name. <laughs> um and and I think it's a cool poster and it's the char- so it's the characters Jason Patrick and Sandra Bullock like looking screen uh right um and all sort of like speed water droplets moving past their face, right? Mm. That's all it is. And it says and rush think- hour hits the water. Great, great stuff. It's a cool poster, I think. And and we we lined it up on the like far side of the house, so the characters are like looking, mm. you know, the 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 composition of and, where we put. The and there's been a little bit on. of uh, conjecture about what the other posters were because I I can't always. We definitely had Space Jam because that was the Space controversial one. one where people would come over and we say good posters for bad movies. They'd be like, but you've got Space Jam there. And you would have to explain mm. Space Jam as a bad movie. I, I like, I, yeah, like it's a fact. I would have to correct them and explain <laughs> that Space Jam as a um, bad movie. I know we had Fifty Shades of Grey at one point. I think that yeah, was in the, had... in the house we lived in after this one, though. We got it later. We had Batman vs Superman. Well, we, we put we put them all up. Yeah. But th- there was just those four, I think. Um, and 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 Akarana, a place we don't live anymore. So I could just say the it could dox it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But so we we would we would look at the poster for this movie every day for a while mm. and just never thought and just to, kiss. to see it and just kiss and, and think about the poster sometimes. <laughs> um, and yeah, so all of this is to say my familiarity with this movie was like oh, this is going to suck. This is like one of the worst sequels ever. And I'm not going to say I liked it. Of mm. course I didn't. It's it's too long. It suffers from the same problems as Speed 1, mm. but it's also a bad movie. So yeah. it's like you're not even given the like creamy nougaty center of just yeah. Most of it's good. It's like it's also 20 minutes too long. But what I will say <laughs> is if this movie was not a sequel to Speed, Mm. and you 
changed the name of the movie to Cruise Control mm. and you changed Sandra Bullock's character's name and removed the reference she makes to breaking up with Jack Traven. Mm. I don't think this would stand out. I don't think this would be laughed, mocked as much yeah, as it yeah. is. I don't, I don't think it would be like It would I be like would, the Poseidon Adventure from, yeah, from 2006 like it's, or whatever. Because most of it, and we'll get to why, where the speed factor comes in, most of it is just there's a terrorist on a cruise ship, mm. which is fine. I'm, that's that's what they should call nine, nine, it. Terrorist on a cruise ship. There's a terrorist ship. on it's, a cruise ship. It's, it's a fine 90s action movie that would have been serviceable you, it, you know like it's not it's not that it's not as silly if you take away the fact that it's supposed to be about the dramatic tension of going too fast <laughs> um, which which does come into it because the final act of the film um is insane mm. i will give it this it's a pretty spectacular mm. if not ridiculous final act where the bad guy reveals he's like locked his lock, I guess, cruise control, mm. so that a, the the boat, the cruise ship, is going straight for an oil tanker that's in the middle of the ocean, right? Yeah. And it's going to crash. Everyone's going to die. Now, this is when the silliness comes in. That it's like, my God, we're going ten miles an hour. We're going to crash, and it's like knots. Oh. They use knots. <laughs> knots. Yeah. Now it's knots. Much less exciting. Um, and so the silliness is there. It's not because the first three quarters of the movie, I was like. Ah, this is just this isn't that bad it's just there's mm. a terrorist on a boat um and then the speed thing actually comes into it and what was it what's interesting about this is they figure out how to say how to save it um jason patrick go takes a random character and not sandra bullock which i was like the other character should be sandra bullock here what are you doing <laughs> but she gets kidnapped by willem dafoe which again is like she should be the main character of the film, I think. Like, because you remember he takes that other guy and they go under the water and they have to dive in shifts to like unlock something mm. so that they can turn the auto steering off, basically. Yeah. So they're diving down. Forty seconds later, they'll dive back up and the other one goes down. Mm. Baffled that that's not the two leads of the yeah. film do- doing that. It should be. Um, and uh, so they they do all this and this allows them to shift the boat thank god the day is saved Mm -hmm. unfortunately and now that they're not headed for the oil rig they're headed for just a seaside village they're in the in the caribbean yeah uh and they do not stop the boat ladies and gentlemen who have not seen speed two and the boat just crashes into the city this town do, you don't see anyone die but of course people mm. would die if that happened so much destruction is involved that it skyrocketed the budget of the film um it is such a bigger mess than speed one's mess mm. well, um it's a and it is bigger, bigger. Of course, of, you've got to that's the wise decision to go bigger yeah. but not only is it a bigger mess than speed one it is, I would guess, more lives lost than if it just crashed into the oil rig. And so the funny thing about Speed 2 Cruise Control is I think the bad guy kind of wins in the end. Like, he blows up and dies, but mm. but it's like he caused destruction. He would have, you yeah, know, like he, uh, it he is... successfully carried out a terrorist attack yeah. that is worse than the one he was trying to do. I, 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 like, I disagree that it would have been... I, I think because people are able to run out of the way, et cetera, there is a lot of destruction and stuff, but I think that, you know, crashing into an oil tanker, everyone on both boats is going to die, you know, mm. especially in a movie when it's going to explode. Right. I, yeah. I, I think I, I will say, I think Willem Dafoe, I think you're right that he did win and he did fuck over this cruise company that let him go. Mm. Um, mm. Because we haven't actually explained the plot of the film, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, I, I I don't know that that's necessarily more lives lost, but yeah, to briefly explain the plot of the film, Sandra Bullock yeah has broken up with Jack um, because relationships based on uh, yeah, extreme, circumstances extreme circumstances never work out. Film starts. She's getting her. She's trying to get a driver's license. She is just the worst fucking driver in the world. She ends up, despite driving through Los Angeles, she ends up like you know way down like in the hills and uh, you know almost kills this driving instructor and then runs into her 
what she thought was a nice, boring boyfriend. She knew he worked for the LAPD, but he thought he just, you know, was bicycle patrol in Venice Beach. And then turns out he's actually like the fucking madman of the LAPD and mm. probably knew Jack. <laughs> and yeah, um, he's like, hey, babe, sorry I lied to you. I'm going to take you on a cruise. <laughs> and mm. they get on the cruise. They notice this kind of weird dude. Um, who's Will and Defoe's character, and then yeah, the plot—it's it, not involved. Uh, it it isn't. You have to keep your speed above a certain amount. It's that he yeah, locks the autopilot to be headed for this thing, and then plot ensues yeah. to to, and then yeah. the last twenty minutes tacked on. The end is like a jet ski chase, and yeah, they have to get back to the yeah. oil tanker, and there's a whole, a whole bunch of shit. Yeah. What do you think this has on Rotten Tomatoes? By the I way? would guess like seven or eight. Yeah, it's got 4%. Yeah. A pretty crazy low score. One person um, who accounts for that 4% of critics that uh, loved the film, Armand though, White? is. No, actually. Oh. Think. think um, Alan think DeGeneres. The most famous, <laughs> think the most famous critic of all time. Oh, myself. Exactly. Richard Martin loved the film. <laughs> Roger Ebert. Called Eber. it. Um, Called it the uh, <laughs> a definitive, a truly rousing ocean liner adventure story. Richard wow. Martin did. No, Roger Ebert thought it was good, and I kind of get it. Like, it's not that I think it's good. Just like what I said before, like it's serviceable if you ignore the speed aspect mm. of it. I think. Um, the one one thing that is interesting as well is like that again is like this isn't a bad plot thread. Is like one of the like sympathetic cruise uh, like uh uh guests is a deaf girl which feels you know very 2024 that mm. you would include like um a, you know a, a disabled character or something like mm. that in something like this i thought that was yeah, cool. and what happens and, with that deaf girl Ojo? well she she goes missing and um everyone's worried that she's not going to get on a lifeboat in time because because a bunch of characters stay on because they can't get on a lifeboat. Well, yes, yeah, so like Willem is- Dafoe is like, you have, because it's more wants to watch the world burn. He's like, you've got time mm. to get everyone off the ship. Captain has to go down with it, obviously, but yeah. you, I'm giving you time to get everyone off the off the ship and then once 15 minutes is up, full throttle. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so some people stay on and this deaf girl is lost in the ship somewhere. Um, Jason Patrick is shown as being able to speak sign language throughout the film. So he has sort of bonds with this girl early on before the action starts. Um, and then he finds her in the boat and he's like um, taking her out of the boat and then she stops him and starts signing something to him. None and of the sign language is subtitled um, in the film, yeah. by the way. So he, he's repeating it as she's saying it to him. And do you remember what she says? She says, uh, because she sort of has, like, you can tell she has, like, you know, a a crush on him a little bit. She's a bit infatuated Mm. with him. And she says, you know, thanks for saving my life. Um, I love you and I'm going to be 15 next month. To which he replies, relationships based on extreme circumstances never work out. Fuck, it's a good, it's a good uh, save, isn't it? <laughs> like, it's when that happened, I was like, oh god, so, like what an uncomfortable joke. To yeah, like- so it's because AJ messaged me a few days ago and was like, God, yeah. there's an uncomfortable joke in Speed Two, and this joke is maybe like an hour twenty into the film, and it's like you got me paying so much more attention to this film than I would have otherwise because I was like, I don't want to yeah. miss it, and then that happened. Yeah. There was a couple of jokes I was like. Mm. Depends on how, you know, uncomfortable, <laughs> how uneasy AJ is with this topic. It's, but it's, It depends how uneasy AJ is with speed. <laughs> yeah. So weird, weird joke in the, in the, in the middle of the film that, that, um, I th- it's something about the fact that she says 15 as well. Mm. Like as if that would make it better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think that's what stuck me. I was like, it's not like, not that this is a, a okay joke, but it's not like she says I'll be 18 in a month. That's still pretty creepy, but at least it's like, that's the, mm. in the 90s. Or in, or in New Zealand, always, 16. Yeah. And everyone in the 90s was always joking about, you know, God, I hope she's 18, kind of. People still do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm just checking what the age of consent in the Caribbean is. 16, yeah. so. I'm not going to make a comment or a joke about this new piece of information that's what? <laughs> been revealed. I, yeah, I mean, I was just going to, you know, it's interesting. We're about, it's 15 in some places. Where is it? Richard, 
I don't think I want to, to research this. <laughs> I think this is a bad place to go after discussing this joke. Well, I just, I like, you know, that giving the film the benefit of the doubt that the girl is mm. like, the reason I came to the Caribbean is because I'm going to be 15 soon. <laughs> and I know that the age of consent there is 15. <laughs> it's not, it's 16. It's not. Well, it, it varies on, depending on what actual part of the Caribbean you're in. Mm. Anywho. What a fun tangent. Rate this tangent out of 10, everybody listening. I'd be keen to hear what people think. Uh, yeah, so not only did this win um, the Razzie for Worst Remake or Sequel, it also won something called a Stinker uh, mm. for Worst Sequel. Um, so who, what, what the hell are the Stinkers, I guess, is my question. Um, let's see. The Stinkers Bad Movie Award... Um, uh, when did it end? Men in the late 1970s. Uh, last awarded 2006. I guess there's only room for two parodies of the Oscar um, wow. in the world. Uh, yeah. So I would like to talk about titles, Richard. Mm. Um, do what do you, Speed, generally, I think we could agree. It's, yeah, it could have been called Fastness good, or... Could have been called Fastest or the bus that couldn't slow down. Um, it was originally, the first film was originally titled Minimum Speed, uh, which I understand mm. why you might think that's a good title. But fuck, does Minimum put like a. Yeah. Like, it's make like, your movie do you want to see lame? Minimum Speed or Maximum Speed? It's like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because Minimum Speed, without the context of you have to t- stay above 50, it's like, what? They're going like. <laughs> one mile per yeah, hour yeah. like what <laughs> the minimum um, speed yeah 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 so it was changed to speed which i think is a really good title speed to cruise control love it i'm stuck on something which is that the term cruise control mm. is not a cruise ship term mm. it's a it's a driving it's a car term and if this was a movie about a car still if this was still about a bus then I'm like, yeah, cru- cruise control, all right. Mm. But it's like it's the it's a legally blonde situation where it's doing three things mm. with its clever wordplay, but one of the things is not absent in the film, right? So, so for those who need catching up, it's not present um, in the film. Do you mean not present in the film? Um, uh, uh, Reese Witherspoon's character in Legally Blonde, the Legally Blind, which is what Legally Blonde takes its mm. pun from. There's no blindness in the film. It's just about legality. Um, and we've always talked about how it feels so close to a perfect title, but like the thing it's referencing isn't really yeah. about being a lawyer. Um, and I'm stuck with that here as well, because it's not about uh, control, like cru- cruise control, the what, the, the, uh, setting <laughs> on, a, on, a, on a car it's about a cruise ship and i i just wonder if that breaks it for me can you, you I, I just uh, unrelated but like how funny it would be if tom cruise started the first film didn't return for, for this sure. and it was called speed 2 cruise control for sure because you'd expect him to return <laughs> yeah or if he was in this one if he played um jason patrick's character mm cruise control fuck that would have been and he takes control or something like that i don't know oh maybe he takes control <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that is the speed duology do you have any other stray thoughts on speed too cruise control yeah hmm. do you think it's worth the anti-hype do you think it's as bad as everyone oh, no is? it's a, it's a fairly eh blockbuster if this if this wasn't called speed 2 i reckon it would have like 30 percent. yeah I, I don't reckon that the finale is necessarily as crazy as you made it out to be but i do think it's one of those films where it's like they have followed through on what they set out to do like because because you were like oh my god it's crazy i was like fuck it must be crazier than the cruise ship crashing into a town because presumably that's where the film leads and then that's what happened um and it's like yeah that, that you you say this this cruise ship is locked going in a straight direction it has to hit land at some point that it's like yeah you you have to follow through with that and so i was glad that it did and they and like the spectacle of it crashing is 
pretty well done. It's cool. I, I still it's, think that yeah. Jan de Bont is a, a decent director, you know, based on just mm, the, the mm. very few films I've seen. But I do think that this film is one of those films that made me think, like, is Sandra Bullock a good actor, even? Mm. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> that it's like, it, it's such a... I hated all the driving instructor stuff because it's one of those things that's just like, no one would do this. No one would drive like this. Like, it, it's mm. insane. And... Yeah, she's being willfully dangerous when she's trying to drive. Yeah, she's driving. she's not even trying to like be on her best behavior and and fucking up. It's like she's just being insane. And mm. yeah, I, I I don't know. It's like because she, famously the Blind Side, her Oscar for that was is one of those ones that people are like, oh, did you deserve that? And. Mm. It may I, I during the film I was like googling lists of like worst actors to have an Oscar because I was like is Sandra Bullock like considered a good actor like it had me mm-hmm. rethinking this whole thing she's great in Gravity and that's probably the the closest um probably would have deserved an Oscar for that over the Blind Side I think mm-hmm. but I think Kate Blanchett won that year no, but no. yeah do you know who most people have as the worst actor to win an Oscar in in those lists I mean. I feel like Halle Berry is one of the ones that I would... She pops up a lot, yeah. Um, top of most of the lists I read was uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, for, who won for... Um, Shakespeare in Love. Shakespeare in Love, which is God, also... Shakespeare, Shakespeare in Love and Love's just... Oscars are very much yeah. like a Harvey Weinstein buying them. And, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like Shakespeare in Love is like the biggest like the most damaging wrecking ball to the Oscars. Like, yeah. like ba- bad films have won, but I feel like that's the one that like caused the most like revisionist history. Well, be- because it's Harvey Weinstein specifically, it's very, yeah, like what's yeah. going on behind the scenes here. Yeah, yeah. All right, Richard, as we close, come to the closing moments of the show, we've surprise got another 20 minutes left tacked on at the end of a, of a pretty tight conversation. I thought um, we were reaching the logical conclusion. <laughs> no, no, no. This is a segment, our tried and true segment on Film Franchise Fortnite's uh, called Continue the Franchise. Do you think we should rename this segment in light of two film, two franchise? Is this now called Trilogy Drift? That's what I'm thinking. Nice. How about we we start we we let people vote if Trilogy Drift is a better name than continue the franchise. And what I like about this is that this does not mean we have to pitch Speed Three. If you want to pitch a video game or what you know, mm. we can still pitch the same thing. And that's what the drift part accounts for. Right. It's how do we make this a trilogy drifting into just other things that could right. exist in the speed uh, universe um but before we get to that speed three is not just a brainchild of seth mcfarlane and that family guy joke there are rumblings there are other things um keanu reeves in the last couple of years said yeah i'll do speed three with, with sandra bullock which is i feel like he just says he'll do any sequel these these days really um so yeah well, you it's know, like when he's it's, when he was like what like 15 hours into press for john wick four they're like would you do speed three and he's like whatever yeah, yeah yeah sure um, i do sure. that um <laughs> there's also i'm sure you have this but there, there was a there's a father ted episode called correct speed 3. there's a there's a father ted episode called speed three uh so this was um written by arthur matthews um no sorry written by yeah arthur matthews and uh famous now now outed transphobe uh graham oh, linen yeah. um who uh made an episode so season three episode three of uh father ted is called speed three um and it is about uh father so they 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 ask themselves how can we make a worse sequel than speed two um and the episode is what's it it's about a A booby trapped milk float that will explode if its speed falls below four miles per hour So the joke's been done, um, and now here we are. Well, that, to that's also the thing. It's that, that the joke. when you're pitching as a, a speed sequel, it's like, well, what's the slowest thing mm. that you can have be the joke? So, what's your sequel? What's your trilogy drift? I I I want to do a a Lego sequel sort of thing mm-hmm. where it's almost like uh, the Scream reboots where it's like mm-hmm. you have someone who is obsessed with the original crime mm. re redoing it and somehow wants to get, I mean, fuck it, set it in the real world. 
Sandra Bullock and yeah, so it's set in quote unquote the real world. Sandra Bullock and Keanu Reeves are reuniting for a film together. The limousine to the premiere is is rigged with a bomb by an obsessed speed fan, and mm-hmm. that and Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock playing themselves have to keep the limousine going above fifty one miles per hour because he's yeah. doing it bigger and better. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Nice. I love it. I'm going to take my idea from one of the better concepts that was pitched for Speed 2 when they first uh, oh, greenlit yeah. a sequel because Speed 2 was based off a recurring nightmare that um, Jan de Bont uh, <laughs> was, was having um, where he got um, uh, st- yeah, stuck on a cruise ship that crashed into into a city. Um, but one of the other ideas that I thought was, was better um, was about a a plane flying through the mountains that um has to stay low because if it reaches a height then it explodes so it's an altitude mm. thing so altitude could have been nice. yeah, yeah. a cool or 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 low you know like yeah. like because speed uh, from if we think of speed from like a scientific um concept you know like speed force gravity uh y- you know volume like there's yeah, all these other volume. energy f- energy forces that you could base a- a- an exploding um vehicle around mm. um so yeah that what, was what that was volume supposed to be, be set. About? um if this um so something's being filled mm. right and if it fills it with too much it explodes so, a-, a hot air balloon a hot air balloon. What well, it needs to be that, that if it's if its volume <laughs> drops below a certain amount. Mm. So what's but something that's how that, hot, air, hot air balloons work? Is that they're yeah, you're you're filling the balloon with hot continuously air. with hot air. But if there's too much hot air, so it's just a, is it no? Is it like if it if it goes below? It's not if they reach that volume. It's if it goes. That's the yeah, better yeah. way to do. So they have they have to stay in the hot yeah, air yeah, balloon. Yeah, yeah basically yeah yeah um f- for anyone interested th- another idea that was um nearly made instead of speed two cruise control was uh involving a vietnam war era military ship um set to explode if its ammunition came in contact with water which i don't know what scientific energy source you could call wet speed yeah. two wet well th- th- there are a lot of elements that um uh, reaction th- that re- yeah reaction Mm. that mm. react with water mm. quite explosively yeah so yeah i think a plane that can't fly mm. high or the plane that couldn't fly too low <laughs> too high i think is where the i think it's that's what the idea was was that it has to fly low through the mountains not oh, high. Yeah, right, okay yeah, well yeah. either that or it's it's a plane and you the plane's not allowed to land which is yeah. actually an existing yeah. film um yeah called the, the plane flight. that couldn't it's land good. until the doomsday <laughs> flight but also interesting like that like the the production of the original speed is like the screenwriter was told about a film called runaway train which i've actually seen mm. um mm. with john voight in it about a train that speeds out of control which is based on a japanese film and he was like his dad told him, oh, yeah, they're speeding because I think there's a bomb on the train, which isn't mm. actually part of Runaway Train. And then so yeah. he was like, oh, I could write a movie about this. And then so it ended up becoming like an original concept because he's, it's based on like a misremembered telling of another film. What a great uh, source of inspiration yeah. to write a screenplay. If you, everybody, if you're trying to figure out how to write a screenplay, how to write a screenplay what you should do is think of a movie you vaguely remember yeah. and then just rewrite it and then go back and check how much of what you wrote yeah. is is original and how much is you know yeah. that'd probably be a good practice is like imagine even not even like one you half remember imagine rem- like a movie you trying to seen. re or one you have i'm saying like imagine trying to rewrite empire strikes back from memory Right, I'm thinking of when Hurley does this in Lost. Right, right. Um, that's why I picked that one. But any movie, Star Wars from memory, right? And and write it from memory, and then watch the film and cross reference it with your script. This is my new trilogy drift, actually. Wow. Um, and then um, uh, 
what what I imagine that that experience of rewriting a film would do for mm. you is as you're rewriting it, you could go off on your own tangents and then maybe you could separate those tangents from Star Wars, change some names and I, I, I feel and, like Star Wars is, is like too restrictive and too like mm. you do it with a film where it's like it's a very simple concept. And so you're not gonna remember any of the characters. So those mm. come up from you because obviously you're going to be like Han so- oh there's the scene it's not Empire but like oh there's the scene in the trash compactor like you remember all these like super key scenes but if you take it like if I got you to rewrite the Poseidon adventure mm. it's probably other than oh a cruise liner flips over you're not going to remember any of that like you know I remember there's a scene where they're stuck in an elevator shaft and they have there's a guy hanging on to his leg one of the mm. characters' legs, and they has to kick him to get him to because the elevator's falling. I, and I, I remember rem- a scene where Fred Willard has to swim, um, and they're like, "This is a one-way trip," and and he drowns. And I remember like seeing him drown. And also, you know, I could be proving my point here, but I can't even remember if it's actually Fred Willard that does that part, but someone does it at some point. Um, a little update on our on our Discord. No one's really commented on Street Kings 2, Motor City, and Miss Congeniality 2, Armed and Fabulous popping up. So I guess we'll call this one a wash, everybody. Mm. Uh, we tried to be be smart about it. Maybe we were just too smart uh, this time, mm. I think. Uh, but so, yeah. Uh, all we've got to do now is rank that franchise and then roll do do franchise roulette for our next two film franchise that we'll be covering mm. in um, two weeks time. So uh, rank that franchise. We've got a list over on uh, Letterboxd um, where we rank every franchise we've ever watched. I reckon we should put this around 30. Why is that? because I have been bribed to say that. <laughs> Is this what people were talking about in the... Although they... Made, so, okay, so Luke of New York in the Discord is trying to bribe you to put presumably miscongeniality too at a different point. Well, so we, right. we've mentioned this before, but we have people who place bets on where we're going to rank the franchise, but mm. the thing is that this time they don't know what the franchise is uh so but they've still had to place their bets uh a lot of people that they think they 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 said oh we we caught your little hint that it might be blade runner and all of this is my my Mm. very explicit almost telling you it was going to be blade runner and then i message aj to be like let's not do blade runner it'll be real funny (laughs) and then not that we were ever going to do blade runner but we uh yeah, so now people have placed bets, probably presuming it's Blade Runner, uh, but no, it's actually Speed. So so the question with ranking Speed is we have something called the Nymphomaniac Constant, which is a movie that's half great, half terrible, or a franchise that's half great, half terrible, um, that represents the true middle, or at least the, um, not the middle, it's not literally the middle, it's the... What it's the I middle in it's terms the, of quality. It's yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm stuck with ha- if speed is as a franchise is better or worse than the Nymphomaniac Constant. Yeah, because it's not like the first one has its like stuff we don't like. I mean, is it, so speed like, too? Is, is speed the new Nymphomaniac Constant? And is that going to be the story for mm. two film two franchise? I, I imagine the so Nymphomaniac's currently in the um ninety fifth spot is are we going to see a lot of franchises this year like orbit around that spot because of the Probably, nature of yeah. doing two film two franchise okay so above the nymphomaniac constant we've got the mighty ducks trilogy mm. is speed and speed two collectively better than the mighty ducks trilogy no is it so is it just above the nymphomaniac constant I reckon, or just below I reckon that's what we do just slightly above i reckon okay so it's at 90 but don't save that the, don't save it. No, don't. God, no. We don't want people oh, okay. dying. We're doing speed. Oh, right. Of course. Of course. You didn't save, save it, it, did you? God, AJ. No, I didn't. No. All right. Well, no, all good. That's it. It's the 94th best franchise we've ever watched. Richard, let's roll that roulette. So we've got a new um, franchise list now that is exclusively two film, two franchises. Um so we're going to roll... What's the number out of these days? I've forgotten. Yeah, let's have a looky-loo, shall we? 
And so for those on the Patreon, we kind of... So there's enough for like four years of franchises. <laughs> we kind of forgot um, to put the Patreon poll up for the next two film franchise. So we'll do that after whatever we roll now. This is going to be a roulette fortnight. Um, so give us a random number on your random number generator, Richard, and you make me guess what it is. Okay, it's a two film franchise. 43. Richard, what is franchise 43? Before you tell me, if everybody enjoyed this episode, please consider supporting us at all the places. You can find Cold Popsha on Instagram and Twitter. You can also find us on uh, Discord, where you can come and tell, talk to us about your thoughts on Speed uh, 2 specifically um and of course uh you can support us on patreon um which is all sorts of goodies including a post-credit scene which will come at you after the end of the episode richard make me guess make me sound like an idiot okay so it's a two film franchise okay uh nomeo and juliet (laughs) oh did you look it up No, no it's not uh interestingly so the the both the the subject of the film as well as the creative team behind the film both no longer exist. As in, is it um, an Orion franchise? No, Orion's back. <laughs> Orion's back, that's true. So it's about something that no longer exists mm-hmm. and it's made by something, that made no by a company that, that no longer yeah. exists. <sighs> something that no longer exists um happiness no uh, <laughs> dinosaurs <laughs> uh, i don't know can you give me another hint uh it's animated okay um is it fern gully no because the, rain the rainforest no yeah. longer exists <laughs> <laughs> um is it um um is it like a good good movie bad sequel situation? Uh no, it's to, to your knowledge. Too very as far as I'm aware, too recently on par with each other films. I don't know. I need another hint, I think. This is exciting. Uh, it was uh nominated for Brett McKenzie beat it. It was its only competition for uh Best Original Song in twenty fourteen. No, in in, in twenty eleven, sorry. There was only two songs nominated. Um oh and, really yeah uh yeah for, for some reason that year and um uh, so, the, so the first one came out in 2011 yeah and the second one came out in 2014 have you seen them i have not have i seen them uh, i'm not sure i don't know just tell me okay <laughs> tell so me some act- actors who are in it maybe jesse eisenberg zombie land no no that didn't come out in 2014 and zombies still exist. um and that's not animated and zombies still exist <laughs> uh okay I'll, hmm. I'll just tell you so uh, in two weeks time we are going to be covering blue sky studios film about the spix's macaw which is now extinct uh rio ah oh, right is there a rio too yeah interesting when you said spix's macaw i was like richard what the fuck is that who is spix's macaw <laughs> I was like, I've never fucking heard of that, man. What are you saying? Yeah, yeah so the, um, the the bird that Rio is about is extinct in the wild. This is also a franchise that famously tanked a Pixar film in development. Yeah, Newt. Yeah. So, all right, fuck it. Let's do Rio and Rio 2 next <laughs> Um, Stay tuned for that. It's going to be exciting, going to be fun. Um, And, yeah, if you like this, I said all that already, help us out um, and stay tuned for the post credit scene coming at you after this music ends Richard it's been a pleasure I can't wait to get back into this team with you I can't wait to watch Rio Rio Welcome along, everybody, to the post credit scene. There's a segment at the end of each episode where if you donate $5 or more over at patreon.com slash coldpopshire, you get to give us something to talk about in this, the post credit scene. Richard, who's it from and what is it? Today's post credit scene t- comes to us from Jason White, who says, if you had $100,000 but could only use it to buy something for your co-host, what would you get each other and how would this change your relationship? I've always thought that, and I'm ruining the joke now if it ever happens, but if I came into like an unexpected windfall of money, I wouldn't tell AJ about it. 
I would just make a fake account on Patreon and sign up for the thousand dollar tier, just so we would get the email being like, uh, you know, uh, Dylan Murphy has uh, signed up for <laughs> the thousand dollar, and and just Amazing. the message you would send me being like, dude. <laughs> So what a great answer! If I got a hundred thousand dollars, I would buy my own Patreon tier. Yeah, um, just to which fuck would just, with you. Just puts the money back in your account, I guess. In the mm. in the end, so it's it's you could do it now, Richard. <laughs> you don't need to. If you have a thousand dollars, you don't need to wait. Oh, that's true. Uh, for it. It. Uh, um, what would I buy you? I would probably buy you like a house, maybe for a hundred thousand dollars. Not in this true, economy, not. buddy. Uh, um, I'd 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 take us on a on a whirlwind yeah, uh, tour it, it, across it would the, be, the world. I, yeah, it would be travel probably. Um, uh, you should spend money on experiences, not on hmm, possessions. A I gastric think. bypass. You should get a gastric bypass, dude. <laughs> <laughs> 